Hello, innovators. I'm Todd Wyant, and welcome to the Bridging the Gap podcast presented by Applied Software Great Tech Group. You're invited to join our conversation to model the future of construction innovation and the digital transformation adventure of this great industry. My guest today is Elizabeth Crowley. She's the president and CEO of the Building Trades Employers Association, representing 1,200 union contractors in New York City. She's the first woman to lead the organization advocating for increased union-led construction, safety, and diversity in the industry. Previously, Elizabeth served on the New York City Council, where she championed construction safety and expanded opportunities for minorities and women-owned businesses. Welcome to the show, Elizabeth. Todd, thanks for having me on the show, and thank you for the good work that you do with Bridging the Gap. Thanks. I appreciate it. So I always like to get people's origin story. How'd you get into the, the world of construction? Well, I followed my passion. As a young artist, I knew I wanted to restore the interior, interior of uh, historical buildings in New York City. And so I studied uh, art restoration in college. And upon uh, graduating, I had known that a big restoration project was happening at Radio City Music Hall, which is one of our historic theaters in the city. And I wanted to be a part of that. So I went down to the union with uh, my portfolio, which is a little naive and green and unusual for somebody who wants to work in a building trade, and said, look, I want to work here. This is what I know how to do. These are my skills. And I heard that you need people who have these skills to do this work. And I was right. Uh, you know, what they said to me is that, you know, we need to give you a little bit of safety training uh, and get you prepared. But you're, we do not have enough what they call decorative painters. And um, Radio City contractor that's doing this uh, particular art um, finishing work needed more. And, and we're requesting from the union for more decorative painters with the knowledge and ability to do the goalie. And that was my first job. And from theater to theater, church to church. I had opportunities that opened up, um, and I worked in the trade for a few years before getting involved with the union and then getting involved with government, running at holding office, and uh, and now I'm here at the BTA representing the employers. That gave me an opportunity some 20 years ago or more when I was just a kid coming out of school looking for a job, and the same employers that are giving hundreds of thousands you know, it, it, we are the largest contractor association in the country, but our union employers extend beyond just employing New Yorkers. Many of our larger contractors do work throughout the country. And so many, many uh, people are able to build livelihoods uh, off uh, building and rebuilding, not just New York City, but all the cities throughout the country. Yeah, that's awesome. What do you think is a, maybe a misconception that people have about construction? Maybe that's not in or mm -hmm. that uh, it's dirty, which it can be dusty and you could get your hands dirty, but uh, it's so interesting. And what you leave one room or one building or the, the, the guys that, and, and gals that do the more interesting work, infrastructure work, you're really impacting not just people, but communities and cities of people on the work that you do. So it's quite interesting. And you're building uh, and rebuilding, uh, which makes our city cleaner and smarter and uh, forever change. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So uh want to kind of dive into a serious topic here. So, you know, September is National Suicide Prevention Month. Wanted to really take time to explore this really important obviously heavy conversation. Why is, is mental wellness and, and suicide prevention, why are they such critical issues here for the construction and industry? Everyone who, who knows the industry knows how dangerous the work. And we do have a lot of on-the-job you know, injuries or uh, that we face out more so than most industries. Mm -hmm. But the, the hidden reality of how dangerous the job is, is the fact that we have far greater number of suicides than compared to any other industry. And we need to get to the heart of why that is. 
And so the BPA uh, decided a year ago, shortly after I came on board as the new president and CEO, to tackle this issue, try to find out why, and to build awareness and greater support. Um, and, and, you know, the industry is known as a tough, strong, tough guy industry. People concentrate on physical fitness or physical safety. But what we're trying to do here is measure safety and physical fitness uh, and, and being strong, not just physically, but mentally as well. And we're really uh, working to break down the barriers and break the stigma of talking about suicide and mental health. And we've been doing that on job sites throughout the city uh, this week in particular because OSHA has picked this week as Suicide Awareness Week on construction sites and because of uh, it's suicide awareness. Yeah, I mean, the, the statistics around suicide in, in construction are just staggering every time you, you look at them. It's truly mind blowing uh, of well, the, just the level of severity that we're facing here. What factors make construction workers more vulnerable to mental health struggles compared to other industries? Yeah, we don't know with certainty and we're trying to study that more. And that's part of what we're getting at in uh, building more awareness about the program out there to help folks in crisis or in need. Uh, mental health uh, services or substance abuse. We do know that our uh, construction workers are more likely to um, abuse substances, uh, have drug addiction, that coupled with depression has plagued the industry. Sometimes it's an injury that, uh, you know, a doctor may prescribe opioids, which gets the person in recovery from physical uh, injury hooked on a drug. Uh, then they need help getting off, uh, which is very difficult. And sometimes it's the inability of the work. You can't work outside when it's too cold. Our workers, although our uh, employees are union workers, some are not, don't have that luxury of getting paid fair wage or the instability of continuous work can put greater stress on one's life, uh, financial stress. No, so so these are some of uh, the issues that could uh, weigh on a construction worker, and so we want to uh, just you know figure out what else it is and work towards making folks know that you know there there's always somebody there that could help them, and mm -hmm. that's what we're hearing from a lot of workers who have been in crisis uh, or those that are running member assistance programs. We're fortunate that our union, all of the unions in New York City of the building trade, have a specific staff person who, uh, and if you were to have conversations with them, they're, they're much more of an expert uh, on the programs that work the best to help those in need. But the, important, but the important reality is that there are people there. That's their job. Uh, and that there's always times in life where people are going to need a help at hand or uh, go through different time and it's important to be there for one another and to recognize when you're working on a job site and uh, one of your fellow uh, carpenters that you're working with or electrical uh, electrician whatever the trade is you're spending seven eight hours a day uh, next to somebody you know when something's not right and be able to say something be there for each other yeah more than agree with that. I think it's such a, a critical thing to take time to get to know the human behind your coworker and, uh, you know, relate on a, on a personal connection. We're, we're all people at the end of the day. You, you can't check your emotions and your, your personhood at the door when you come onto the job site. That's it's ridiculous. You have to bring your, your full self in there and, uh, connect on that, that human side of things. You mentioned yeah. earlier about the, um, the stigma that is, is still kind of attached to, I think hopefully our, our culture is moving in a, a healthier place with that and, uh, you know, helping to break down some of that stigma, but obviously still there around discussing mental health. How do we begin to break down these barriers and, and encourage more of that kind of open communication style and, and connecting on that human level? Yeah. Well, we've encouraged our employers, both Fubaka of this week, um, they're not only, you know, having these conversations that are difficult conversations, even for the healthcare professionals, 
for the program managers that are specifically out uh, there to help, you know, it's not an easy conversation either for them. But by building awareness, giving out stickers and posters out there, making it more comfortable to talk uh, mental we're also pushing for legislation in the city council here in New York. Every construction worker that works in any of these buildings that we're building has, you know, to go through a certain amount of site safety training with um, to clean up to that site. And there's also uh, site safety uh, training part that our workers have about 40 hours of training uh, they need to go through in order to be able to work on these construction sites. So we're looking to implement that training, which currently has alcohol and substance abuse training within the 40 hours. Mm. But we're looking to expand that, also include medical. So not to, to get these cards that you need to work on the site, but also the training on the site. Talk about mental health and suicide awareness there. We will be able to impact hundreds of thousands of New Yorkers. We have 400,000. New Yorkers who have those cards that are regulated by the permit building. Wow. So knowing that much, and also our uh, Department of Health and Mental Hygiene in the city has some numbers in terms of tracking data um, as to, you know, who is more likely to be in a certain location if they're overdosing, uh, but they don't have the data for suicide. And but sadly, the data for overdosing is high in construction, in construction industry as well. So we're also pushing for a free Narcan on our construction site. We just have it there. Uh, God forbid somebody does overdose, but that we could help them right away. Mm -hmm. So those are some of the uh, programs that we're pushing for here in New York each year. Yeah. You mentioned it a, a bit there at the, the top, uh, but what role does leadership and, and company culture play in creating the the supportive environment for mental wellness on a construction site? I think it's huge. I think that um, it's so important. And here in New York, we really started it. It started with the employer saying that our company is only as strong as the people who are helping working then. And so you are our backbone. You're more important than anything that we'll make on a job or any project. Our people are number one. I want you to know that we understand we all go through difficult times and we're here for you. We're here for one another. And we, that culture is the culture that our BTA employers are establishing and strengthening in the work they're doing this week and, and in the work they're striving to do in the overall culture for their, for their. Love that. So you've mentioned some about what the, the BTA is kind of proposing in and rolling out with different initiatives, uh, including all the, the mental health uh, training. Could you talk more about some of these proposals and the, the impact that you're hoping they, they have? Right. Um, I mentioned earlier that our department of building regulates these training cards that everybody who wants to work on construction has to participate in these classes they could get on. And, and they learn important aspects of keeping site safe and protecting their physical self. There is nothing within the curriculum that touches upon total wealth. And what we're looking to do is implement that curriculum. We have the support of the Department of Building, and we have the support of a number of council members. Uh, they're working to draft up legislation that impacts that training. And it is our hope that we get a program together with the experts who could help condense um, awareness training in a certain section of this overall 40 hour safety training. Yeah, well, that's a, it's a good segue. I was going to dig into some, what legislative actions can be done, you know, whether at the city or the, the state or even the, the national level around mental health, uh, the, the crisis that's happening here in, in construction. Is there any kind of legislative, um, action that is, is needed? Yes, yeah, so, so we have a, a host of bills that uh, we're pushing locally. But um, OSHA, um, as a national leader, can help push forward more than just the, you know, we, we want to work with them 
to make sure it's one of the top topics on Facebook, which um, which looks like they're getting there. But on a national uh, front, that's that's what we're focused. On. And and in New York City here, it, it, again, it's implementing that site safety training card that everyone gets. It has to go through training like every couple of years, so it, it's going to be even if they missed it the first time they got to the site, have to reacquaint themselves. Having our Department of Health and Mental Hygiene track and bring back the data, so hopefully we could start to implement programs that'll bring about change. And um, having the Narcan available is so important because the opioid epidemic is a serious one, and uh, we want to do whatever we can to save lives. Yeah. Uh, how can other cities, uh, you know, take what New York is, is doing and, and bring it into their region. Um, well, that makes sense. I, I think that we're, well, we're opening, you know, we welcome the opportunity to work with other trade associations and other municipalities for similar programs and partner closely with the union uh, because no matter how much can affect the culture within a company. Uh, that worker may, union workers may work with a number of employers, so it's important that they know that they have somebody at the union too. So we're working with the, the union to help ban uh, their end. And all of these unions that practice here in New York City up the trade, they all have national programs. They're all national conventions, and we want to build awareness of their educational program as well as their uh, outreach. And I know that the uh, national president of the building trade, um, Don McGarvey, he is uh, a big proponent of supporting mental health and wellness. And uh, we're fortunate here in New York City, too. Gary LaBarbera, who is our president locally, he is also a big champion, and he started to implement changes more recently, but to this conversation, once once we were all really made aware of just how widespread, uh, how much concern this uh, crisis is, um, we've started to take action. So we're seeing uh, programs put in place, and we're uh, seeing more awareness being built. And I, I think that's really important, and uh, we're not going to we're going to continue. We have a wellness component of our safety committee and our safety committee here at the BTA meet every single month and we have a annual safety conference where we have 200 people come and we're continuing to make sure that mental health is a part of the total safety. That's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, so for construction workers uh, who may be struggling, what resources or organizations should they be aware of and how can companies kind of better support yeah. their, their workers in getting the help? They need. Yeah, yeah. There are a number of organizations, uh, especially as I said, anyone who is a unionized construction worker can definitely go to their union members program coordinator for help. There's a national suicide hotline if they feel uncomfortable by reaching out to their union. Um, there's national organizations that focus on construction and suicide. Uh, prevention and and then there's just you know other uh organizations that aren't specific to construction workers but specific to helping people in crisis mm -hmm. and it's important i think the 988 number is just so easy for folks to remember and, and uh that's why we put that number on our pta sticker here which is like uh going around to a lot of folks who are on our construction sites, and it's okay to not to not be okay. You know, at suicide and crisis lifeline is the place where they would know somebody's there twenty four seven. They yeah, can't wait till the next day. Someone may be at work. Awesome. Uh, what message would you give to to workers that you know may be hesitant to engage in in a mental health conversation for? whatever reason, whether the, the stigmatism or they don't feel a, a connection with somebody else or, you know, what, what have you, how would you encourage them to uh, have those conversations? My message is it's, it's a measure of strength. And 
not only if you're somebody who is in need to identify that you're going to help yourself uh, and be strong enough to, to identify the problem and to, to work towards a solution. You're going to be stronger for doing that. You're going to be better off. Once you get the help that you need, we're all human. We're all vulnerable. And, and, and we need to understand and connect more with one another. And so the, so the message is, if you don't need help, somebody out there may need help. And our message is to get comfortable about talking about mental health and wellness. Know that you're stronger for being in touch with that. And know that there may be a time when you need to be there for somebody else. It's important uh, as humans to be there. And, and, and it's important, I believe, you know, as a consultant worker in a company uh, that works with your colleagues to be there and look out for one another because it is a part of a safer, more productive job. More than agree. I, I think, you know, showing the, the emotional vulnerability is a huge sign of, of strength, of character and for, integrity and fortitude. We, yeah. we want to be able to connect on, on that level and uh, having somebody be courageous enough to, to go first. Yeah, you well, never know who gets inspired by that and is and encouraged by it. And sometimes people just need a friend to listen to. Mm-hmm. You know, like having a bad day, having a bad week. And, and, and you could have good advice. You know, you, somebody just needs to bend and be reminded sometimes about how important they are. And yeah. whether it's just to that job or how other things are more important, and you're, you know, stuck in a moment. And I mean, all, as long as you get yourself a better direction and, and the help that you need. Yeah, agreed. We're not robots. <laughs> Back to the it's okay to not be okay. You know, we're, we're human. Sometimes life is messy. It's okay. We can talk about it and, and share about it and kind of yeah. come and link arms with each other. Bad things is sometimes beyond your control, you know, it's just the way it is. It's terrible yeah. at times, but then life is very enjoyable at all. And just remembering the good times and know that um, things will, while you're feeling this way, it's temporary. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so uh, as we move from uh, awareness to action, how do you envision the construction industry evolving in terms of, of mental health support over the, the next couple of years here? I think we've made some big steps by opening the dialogue and creating an atmosphere that not only starts the conversation, but also it brings not just awareness, but a simple item uh, to do. You know, we're, we're uh, participating in WAH to raise money uh, for organizations that know much more than we do about how to help people. And and so we're continuing for those who want to take action. Um, There's an annual hike every year in April that industry raises a significant amount of money for that gets goes to the American Society for uh, Suicide Prevention. And so there's ways to help financially or um, there, there are ways that you can get certified and better educated uh, on this topic. You know, a few hours of training could help you feel much more comfortable when approaching somebody who may be in crisis. And we could help direct people to that training. I think that if you're a top steward in a union or a construction manager, supervisor, you should get more comfortable talking about suicide awareness and mental health and and work toward um you know getting a certain amount of education and training so that you're comfortable talking about a subject it'll make you a better manager in the long run and i think that your workers would appreciate yeah so uh, are there any kind of resources that you would point people to uh to you know, go I on do that a class journey. with Living Works, which is uh, one of the providers. But I know that there are a number of providers. Are we have a website? I would help. I would encourage folks to go to our website because um, we not only had a conference last year in 2023, our first one, 
focused on mental health. We then again in 2024 had a panel discussion on uh, suicide and mental health in the industry. So those uh, panel discussions and, and the, uh, the conference are online along with materials and um, even toolbox that people could use have a conversation on job site. Awesome. Uh, how do people find out more information on what you all are, are doing and uh, maybe connect with you about this or you know yeah. what you're doing at the association? Well, I encourage them to visit our website, which is BTEA, where the Building Trades Employers Association and our website, BTEA, and, and it's easy to find on our website what we're doing our suicide awareness and and our contact information is there as well. So someone could reach out to me directly through email, ecrowley at btany.com or uh, some some of the other providers, their uh, contact information is also listed on. Awesome. Elizabeth, thanks so much for taking the time and uh, you know all the work that you're doing on this really in- important topic and taking the time to to talk with us about it today. Absolutely, Todd. Thank you for doing the work that you're doing. And uh... 